Welcome to Angels Talk, Soul Relationships. Here's your host, Sandra Lynch. Oh, I'm thinking of Charlie. Charlie Angel, the one who gifted us with this lovely opening music. Oh, stop, look, and listen. It's our divine appointment here today on another fun-filled episode of TV Angels Talk. I'm Sandra Lynch, and I'm truly honored to be here again to present to you the one, the only, Rusty Piazza. Hi. Hi, Sandra. Isn't this amazing how... Spirit just wants us to keep flying with your presence on here. Yes, absolutely. It's yeah. wonderful. Thank you. Glad to be back. Yeah. <laughs> so, Spirit revealed to you, we are to continue this wonderful journey and present some more information about what? Meditation. Yes. Uh, it, I feel, well, we feel like it's important to teach the audience how to meditate. You know, a lot of people heard of meditation but don't take the time to do it so today i would like to teach them how to go into meditation and find the answers within themselves well you know what i i can understand why that is such a uh, very strong area of emphasis because a lot of times you know people talk about hey do you meditate and then for somebody who is unaware of this they're like what do they do? They feel left out. So I can see why spirit has its own way of bringing that in to this subject matter mm-hmm. to make to help people to become more comfortable to do it more and yes. to be one in unity. Well, I mean, if you if you could take 20 minutes a day, I mean, you really should meditate 20 minutes twice a day. It, it centers you. It uh, clears out the, the process of the day, the things that you're going through, and it helps you to process the day too. You know, when you meditate, um, it quiets your mind. It quiets your energies. It quiets your soul. Um, what I said in the first uh, episode that we did about protecting yourself, it's very important to do that. Call in your guides. Protect yourself. And this is what I say, and I'm going to teach you what I say. Protect me above, below, through, and around. I rebuke any and all negative energies, thoughts, words, and deeds. I call upon my angels, archangels, elementals, ascended masters, Indians, and all that I work with. I surround myself in a bubble of light and call upon the Christ consciousness and all that comes with that. And that's how I start my day and go to bed. I always say that. And, uh, and so when you go into meditation, if you do that, and you can do whatever you would like to say, of course, and do that, then sit comfortably, breathe in and out. It's very important for you to breathe in and out because a lot of times our conscious mind don't want to quiet. We all have that reel to reel that goes in our mind. You know, the, the stuff that happened during the day, the fight we had with our spouse, the, uh, the stuff that went on at work, you know. Did and somebody and, who cut you off on the highway driving. Yes. And then that kind of reel to reels in our brain. And no matter what we do, it just constantly goes over and over into our, in our brain. Meditation gives you a chance to calm that down, to... A lot of times people think meditation is only quiet. It's not always like that. Like in the beginning, it is very important for you to be quiet and to meditate. Even if you don't receive anything, breathe in and out. Take deep breaths in your uh, mouth and out your mouth or in your nose, out your mouth, whatever you would like. And after a while, if you just concentrate on your breathing, that chatter in your mind, it really does calm down. It truly does. Now, me, a lot of times, I always meditate before I go to bed, always. But my meditation before I go to bed is is like five, ten minutes of quiet time. But most of the time, it's me talking to my guides. It's processing the day. Talking to your guides? Yes. Oh, yeah. I mean... I have a very uh, connect, a close connection to my, my spirit guides that are around me. Yeah, you said that before, but uh, really? Like, yeah, yeah, oh yeah. Like, I, who's this one sitting here, this one sitting on this side? Well, I don't, uh-huh. usually I don't see them. You know, oh, my eyes okay. are closed. Usually okay. I just hear their voices so. and, and uh, feel their presence and stuff. Uh-huh. And I a- ask them questions, and they answer me, and I process the day. You know, we all, in our dream state, when we go to sleep, you know, our dreams are us processing what has happened to us in in life in the day and uh, so in meditation before i go to bed i always ask my guides uh 
about different situations I've been through, how I handled certain things, things I could do better, because I'm always striving to be better. I think you said a key word here. You asked them what versus telling them what happened. They already know what happened. They were here. They were around. I they know, were, but the, know. The, the, the human beings... Uh, natural tendency is to say oh I'm broke oh I did, you know versus what can I do to correct this or what solution or sometimes we do things unconsciously oh. you know all the time we do we our words really do affect other people and you know sometimes in a conversation we say something and it hurts their feelings and we had no idea that it hurt their feelings because we never know how people are going to act and react it's very true. And a lot of times, like I said, when I'm talking to them, I'll be like, how did I handle this situation? Uh, what is going on? I mean, different things. I mean, we, we have conversations, me and my guides, we really do. And that's why I've learned so much in my life, uh, because I really have always had a very co close connection with spirit. And people can too, but if in meditation, if they go into meditation and just learn how to quiet their mind, and then things will come to them. It may be flashes of colors, it may be uh, scenes, uh, symbolisms. They'll speak to us in different ways. You know, I always say spirit will tr show us that they're around. You know, how many of you have found pennies laying around your house and you know you didn't put them down? Or you'll find a feather someplace that you never thought. That is the, the other side communicating with you. They're trying to let you know. Uh, I know this. Or numbers. Or, four, well, four, four. Three, three, three. Nine, nine, nine. One, eleven. <laughs> <laughs> I get 111 a lot. Yeah. I do. And a lot of people get 1111, you know, and that's angelic numbers, you know. It, but, you know, spirit really does communicate with us if we just quiet ourselves enough to understand that they are with us. And you can ask for signs, and, and it will happen. Just like uh, spirit, a lot of times will get you to a book that they want you to look at. And then you can literally op ask spirit what do you need to know open the book up and the page that it opens up to read and it will be so appropriate to your life and what you need to know at that time i have a question for you mm -hmm. my 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 spirit guy just oh my god the buzzing around me like that little bumblebee we are in the second largest library in the nation so there's a lot of history a lot of angels in this little city mm. Well, well, also, you got to remember that the Indians lived here. You know, we have three rivers. You know, it is a blessing. And so there is a lot of Indian culture here. And so there's a lot of Indian influence here that is around us all the time. You, the three rivers is very powerful because water is very powerful. Mm -hmm. We are made up of 70% water. Our planet is made mm -hmm. up of, what, 90% mm -hmm. water. You know, it's, it, it's very sacred. You know, um, when I, I've never taken a shower by myself. My chief of protection was always with me. And I used to see him in my mind's eye and he would be doing a dance around my head. Oh. And I learned a long time ago that the shower was very sacred to him. Yeah. It was a baptism, it was a renewal, it was a cleansing. It is. And so I would always sit under the water and he would always do his thing. And it was always a very sacred experience for me. It was a baptism and a renewal. And uh, I found that in the Indian culture, it is very sacred. You know, water is very sacred, just like burning sage is very sacred and Element. very important. Important, yeah. But, you know, scientifically, burning sage, scientifically, they have proven that sage, burning sage kills bacteria and uh, in the air and stuff. And so it is scientifically proven. And a lot of the stuff that we're talking about, about spirit manifesting and the energies of this world and everything, scientifically, they have proven that all of it they have truly proven scientifically you know how people all the time they're like oh show me you know people want to be shown shown because they don't believe in mediums some people don't believe in mediums well but also there's a there's a theory behind it too is they don't want to do the work to get the answers that they need so they will rely and depend on a medium well yeah and, and, and you know what gets me is people come in and they want to ask questions, you know, in their mind. They, they're asking questions. They want certain family members to come through. Well, I can only pick up who's around. You know, spirit really does learn on the other side. You know, there are what is called mystery schools that spirit can go through 
to and learn. Mm -hmm. They and they do. And so when a p spirit and people are, that are around us, they can truly, um, they can truly interact, and they can go and learn and come back. Hmm. Do you understand hmm. what I, I mean? I, I I don't know. I think I got sidetracked. I think an angel was calling me over here. <laughs> <laughs> I have my I have them going on all the time too. I've been working on that development. So. Yeah. We have to learn to trust. Mm -hmm. We have to learn to trust divine intervention. Uh, uh, you know, it, it's really sad to me that in our, in our life we're so busy with work and family and stuff that a lot of times people don't call upon the angels or the only time they do want to call upon the angels is when somebody is dying or, uh, or somebody is terribly sick and then they want to ask the universe and God uh, to help them. Well, they're around all the time. Yeah. Use them. Yeah. Utilize them. Life would be so much fuller. And, yeah. Oh, my and goodness. easier. Yeah. And it really w will because of we're stubborn. You know, we're taught in this world that everything on the outside is what matters. No, it's what's on the inside. It yeah. is really what matters. Yeah. And the rest will manifest. I gotta be. I gotta stay in my truth. You know, I live in the power of now. When I went away for five years and and stayed in Pennsylvania and came back here recently. I really didn't have an, an intention to pick up the shows, and 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 um, however, when I went and I stayed at the house I'm in now and discovered all of the angelic things that I found there. I mean, in the trees, there's angels. There's carved angels, angel wings in the trees. I'm like, oh, and then there was one up there on the same tree. I'm like, oh my god. Ooh, these are signs. These are, and then and then I was finding things that I would need to help to make the changes and the corrections in the house. And I'm like, wow, I found this. This is a gift, you know. But I think because I was seeking and open and aware to creating that too with the angels, and then everything here today. Absolutely. New show. Because, uh, because uh, this show has a true purpose. It is to teach people how to navigate through life. You know, it, life is not easy. Demonstrate. Demonstrate. Big thing. Yeah, absolutely. Because, I mean, people al always have questions. We're always buying the, the new book. We're always watching different documentaries and shows and everything that can teach us. And, and we can teach people. I know because I have been blessed to be able to communicate with spirit the way I communicate with spirit. Mm -hmm. And so I know I'm blessed to be able to teach people what they need to know. You know, it's what they do with it after that is completely up to them. But I, w I would never steer somebody wrong. I only tell them what is the best to their highest good. You know, and the thing about it is, it's planting those seeds. Mm -hmm. John Gardner says that all mm -hmm. the time. Oh, Plant John those Gardner! Seeds. Oh, I'm gonna have him come on too. Absolutely. Oh, yes, he's he is so talented and gifted. Reminds me of Charlie, Charlie Angel. But he always talks about planting those seeds, and it's yeah. true. You know, you don't know what somebody will. Uh, you don't know what somebody will. Will receive from you you know you can talk all day long about spiritual stuff people tune in and out but it's only what their consciousness can accept at that time so you plant those seeds and get make them hungry enough that they go out and search for themselves you know uh, they call it a, the new age movement oh, you know okay. uh, at, at this time but see I don't I, I don't necessarily agree with that wording like I consider myself a light worker because I deal with the light of God and and the angels and the guides and everything and I deal with that you know there is so many different ways of thinking of things and there's so many different avenues to be able to receive the same thing it really don't matter what your beliefs are as long as you believe there is a higher power we all believe that and we also understand that th that we live in duality we truly do okay. so you have yin and yang you you're know? taking it i have these little questions going by floating in my mind and and you're answering them before i even get to ask them <laughs> that's what's unique about this relationship here today and having you on it's like i was just thinking oh what about the duality bang okay. <laughs> fun they truly do flow through me but i mean but it's true you know people uh, people acknowledge that there is good and there is bad. Mm -hmm. Just like people, there is good and bad in everybody. You know, it's when we can heal the dark part of ourself and learn to live with it and to accept it because it's a part of who you are. You can't get rid of 
a thought. You cannot get rid of a ch thought. All you can do is change it. When, it. when you have a negative thought, we all have negative thoughts that come in. Uh, somebody cuts us off in traffic, you know what we say. We say many things, but you can ble bless them at yes. that moment. You can choose to go, okay, I rebuke that. I don't accept that. I bless you. I want you to get there safely. And just by doing these little changes, it truly does change how we act and, and react well, to and things. Well, and it changes us, too. It does. And back to prayer and meditation, what does it change? It changes us. And, and when it changes us, it changes the whole environment around us. Now, another meditation is what I was talking about that I do is talking to your guides, you know, and letting uh, whatever uh, you receive, you receive. Now, how, I, don't want, I don't mean to interrupt, but how does this work in a relationship? Oh, we'll have to get to that episode next. Uh, in a relationship. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. So well, the thing about it, it is in, about in, in a relationship, the best thing you could ever do in your relationship is meditate together because it connects you. You connect your energies yeah. and, you, and you will have your experience and they will have their experience. But the thing about it is when you're coming together in, in a spiritually enlightened way, mm -hmm. there is no downside to that. Now, when you are tapping into the higher frequencies, things will fall away from you. Relationships, jobs, different things will fall away. And uh, you know, how, how many times does something go wrong in your life and you cuss God for what happened? And then later on down the road, you realize, well, that was a blessing. It was, there's a reason yeah. for everything. It really is. We've all done that. We've all been in that state of mind to literally cuss God. when. You know, it's a, it's a shame that we do that, but, but you know, there's a, say, a saying that, that we try to hold on to things so tight that even God is taken away from us. And there's a reason for everything. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. friendships, they, they end because they're not to our highest good. You know, uh, codependency, we're a codependent race. We are. We're codependent, and misery loves company. So if somebody is negative and then they w and then you're positive and then you're around this negative person, what happens? You're trying to rub off positivity on mm -hmm. them and what happens? You end up being negative because of their energy is affecting you in so many different ways. You have to get rid of those uh, relationships because the way I look, look at it is uh, if it's meant for you to have, it will always come to you mm -hmm. or come back to you. Why hold on to abusive relationships? Abusive relationships are very hard for the person that's being abused because mental abuse is worse than physical abuse because the scars and the broken bones, they do heal. It's very painful, but it's the mental damage that it does to you that affects you your whole life. It does, and that's going back to playing the victim. You, you know, it's terrible, and I never want that to happen to anybody. I truly don't, but it's not what you go through. It's how you go through it, and, it, and it's your choice to change from being a victim to being the victor well, of the and, situation. And you know what? After the last episode, I was thinking about you sharing about your teenage years. It is so crucial for our teenagers out there to be... Um, trained to be trained to meditate and, uh, and to change those thoughts in because then they can heal something that comes up that they're resisting already in going through that transformation rather than waiting till they're 40 or 50 in their well, midlife crisis. Well, people got to realize uh, teenagers, uh, pre -teen teenagers, they're full of hormones. Yeah. You know, their thinking is not not yeah. right yet. You know, I mean, there's a lot, a lot. I mean, they feel deeply. I mean, they, yes. they will go off the de deep end of, for the slightest thing that they just shouldn't have went through all that. But it's because their hormones and their brain is changing and everything. And that, if you start meditating when you are a preteen and a teenager, it will affect your life forever. Once you raise in consciousness, once you ri raise your consciousness, you don't never go back. You may go through negative situations, yes, but you never can turn around and go back. You know, once you strive to be more, you become more. Mm -hmm. And it's a beautiful experience. And it then really you is. know. Then you know. And then you know. Yes. Yeah. Ah. Ooh, nuggets here today. Oh, gosh. I just want to just be so quiet and peaceful with it because it feels so good feels right, feels truth. And once I know truth, there's no turning back.
Absolutely, because truth don't change. Truth is truth. You know, the lies of this world, you know, we're taught so many false things in, in this world. We, we truly are. But it's up to us to go into ourself, communicate with a higher power that we all have, and to discern what we're going through and what we need to know. Because they, our guides won't ever let us down. They will only help us. And so if you quiet yourself in meditation, in quiet meditation, then it gives you time to reflect upon the things that is going on, and it really truly does change you. And, and once you start doing that, it becomes a habit. It becomes a part of you. And then when people all the time, they go to stop meditating, and then they're like, oh, I'm off center. I need to start meditating again. They oh, notice yeah. the effects. The whole body, the whole body chemicalization, you feel it. You yeah. Know. Well, you know, like like I said, scientifically, you know, they've done brain scans of a brain that's not in meditation, and then when they meditate, and and it activates so much more of our brain. We only use ten percent of our brain, and to me, I, I I I don't understand that. We have a brain. Why do why do we not use more of it? Well, because we shut it down. It's been shut down for so long. But when you meditate, it really does activate more of your brain. It, it gives you access to information that's already been there. Our, our uh, access, <laughs> access. Well, our very DNA gives us, our DNA has all the information that we come into this earth with all the tools that we'll ever need. It's a matter of unlocking those tools and to be able to access them, access. It yes. truly is. And then by, by living right, you know, we all make mistakes. No matter how, how divinely guided you are, you are going to make mistakes. You are in duality. You are on this planet, you know. I don't know. We'd have to take that a little further in our discussion because I think that there are no mistakes. Well, everything's to teach us. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Everything is to teach us. You know, in spirit, spirit knows how to be happy. When we're in spirit, we know how to be happy. When we come to this earth, we choose the most horrific things to go through because through tragedy, it, we really truly learn who we are. How many times have you seen a mother with her child uh, uh, trapped under a car will literally lift the car up and save their child? We are uh, capable of beautiful things. We truly are. And when you believe in yourself enough to realize that you are truly divinely guided, it will change everything around you. It truly does. Mm. It truly does. Well, I see where the metaphysical chapel on Well Street in Fort Wayne, Indiana, is part of the vortex in Fort Wayne, and it's there making big changes in that community. The, the, it's growing. Mm -hmm. It's growing. More it's because more people are questioning. Mm. You know, uh, we were raised to to go to church. Like, okay, uh, I, I'm not going to speak about any, any church negatively, but a lot of times you go into a church, you go one time a week, and then you do whatever you do the rest of the week, and especially in the Catholic church. You know, in the Catholic church, and I was an altar boy. I, I was an altar boy and Catholic, and I never understood the mentality that you could be a heathen all week long, <laughs> and then you go to confession, and God forgives your sins. Aww. You go to church, and then you're heathen the rest of the week. No, no, no. You have to take res personal responsibility for what you are and who you are to become. It's your choice to do that. You cannot be a heathen all week long and then go, Oh, God, please forgive me, and then all that's forgiven. Because you're still going to be a heathen. You still are who you are. <laughs> Do you understand I, what I, I mean? Understand. And it's nothing against the church whatsoever. It's against the people's thinking. You know, uh, I never understood how this religion and that religion fight. If we are worshiping God and we are trying to divinely live our life, then how can what somebody else's beliefs be wrong? You know, just because you see things differently than other people don't make it wrong. I mean, they're all going to the same place. You know, whatever religion you are, we're all worshiping the same energy, the same God. We truly are. So how can there be fighting? It's a perspective of seeing eye to eye. 
Well, we all have different perspectives. We truly do have different perspectives. Mm -hmm. But and when I don't we, know. And that, I'm just saying that's my perspective, seeing eye to eye. But when we expand our consciousness and realize that that we really are divinely blessed and that we are all worshiping the same God, then how is there an argument? Your beliefs are your beliefs, my beliefs are my beliefs, and we are all worshiping the same energy. And I truly believe that we only have about two minutes left on the show. And guess what? I'd like to invite you on to my live call in All Angels Hotline show, where I would like to open up the phone lines, allow our callers We'll put those numbers on the uh, on the on the screen. Allow those callers to call in, and would you be willing to do absolutely. readings? Oh, absolutely. Readings. Okay. Well, with that, we have to close the show. Okay. Here we go. We've got to fly out of here now. <laughs> Thank you all again for taking your time to stop, look, and listen in our divine appointment here today. I'm Sandra. Sandra linking everyone together with the one, the only Tony Piazza. Rusty. Rusty! <gasps> See, that's he channeling. That was my brother. He's in spirit. He must be here. <laughs> oh, no. and anyway, we're both here to say divine love and holy kisses. See you next time on the hotline.